the Atlanta Falcons made a roster move today as they start into their bye week. Tack McKinley, well, he wanted out. He got out. And for McKinley, it's not really much of a punishment. I think the punishment is making him stay on the team. Waving him today is what he wanted. The only problem is he's got a path through waivers, and he could end up with a team he doesn't want to play for. But I think the only team he didn't want to play for is the Falcons. So he'll take his chances. He'll roll the dice. And anywhere for the rest of the season is better than where he was. He'll be a free agent after the season ends unless someone would claim him. He all of a sudden goes off with 20 sacks over the next half of the season, and they decide to franchise tag him. So McKinley getting what he wanted, getting out of Atlanta, and uh, last week he had to take to Twitter to criticize the team. He was fined for the gesture, but at the end of the day, he wanted out. Shireen, he got out. He got out, and I would be surprised if anybody picks him up off waivers. I think he'll he'll be a, become a free agent, and I think he'll have a, a huge market. You look at teams, competitive teams like the Titans and the Seahawks, and they need pass rushers. Why wouldn't you roll the dice on him for – a, a low-risk deal, lots of incentives in there. And I know he's been injured, injured this season. He's played a total of 81 snaps, missed the last two games because of injury. He's only played four games this entire year and just wasn't good for the Falcons after they made him a first-round draft pick. But he has a chance, if he can get healthy, to go somewhere and make a difference for the rest of the year. And, and maybe he gets a big contract in the offseason if he can get it done somewhere else. I am looking at the first round draft picks from 2017. I believe that was his year. Am I right? Am I right? 2017. Yeah, you are correct. Tack McKinley. He was the 26th overall pick. His contract is not fully guaranteed for the balance of this season, but the salary is only $1.858 million. I think that if you're going to roll the dice on the guy, claim his contract you at a balance. Yeah. Yeah, at a balance of about 900000 for the next eight weeks, take it because it's not guaranteed. He has 655000 in skill injury and cap guarantees for this year. And, you know, when it's partially guaranteed, I don't know how that plays out. Is it, is it partial each week? Do you work at all? I should know this. I've been doing this for 20 years. But even then, that's not much because uh, you, you pick him up, you cut him, you can walk away from it with minimal risk. If you see something there, maybe he was a guy you really liked when he was coming out of UCLA, maybe Jim Mora Jr. And I know it's not technically junior Jim Mora, the elder will vouch for Tack McKinley. I remember having him on PFT live and he went on and on about Tack McKinley back in 2017. So I, I just think it's worth your due diligence because pass rushers are always in demand and there are plenty of teams that could use the help and maybe there's just some buttons that need to be pressed on Tack McKinley to get the most out of him but you've got some teams out there that I think could justify the risk and it may just be that change of scenery Shireen is everything this guy needs absolutely Mike and you look back on that draft you know I wrote on Friday that the Cowboys had regret over two picks after Tack McKinley who they really liked they selected Taco Charlton well, you know who both of those teams passed up, right? T.J. Watt. And if Falcons could have had T.J. Watt. I'm sure they're having the same regret that the Cowboys did. They picked the wrong pass rusher when you look at what T.J. Watt do, d has done. And now as a candidate this year for Defensive Player of the Year, I think they, they would have pre much preferred to have had T.J. Watt, but it didn't work out for them. But a lot of teams like this guy coming out of college, obviously, is a first-round pick for a reason. He's going to get a chance somewhere else. Now it's what do you do with that second chance? Do you go make the most of it and prove that you really are a good pass rusher or do you continue to do what you did at Atlanta, which wasn't very much in the course of 49 games. He had 17 and a half sacks. And let me just say this. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I am reminded of this from time to time. There are many things to like about the draft. One thing that I loathe about the NFL draft is that the coverage consists of a nonstop parade of praise of every first round pick every year, every guy, all the upside, all the positive. The media is complicit in this manufacturing of hope arising from the notion that every one of these guys plucked off the board is going to be great. And it's almost part of the contract that you sign to be part of the draft coverage that you're going to praise and praise and praise <laughs> these guys without ever acknowledging 
that, you know what, those first-round picks, half of them are going to not earn their money. Half of them are not going to be any good. But no one wants to hear that. This whole thing has been built up into this hype machine, Shireen, where you ignore the fact that it is a crapshoot. You ignore the fact that you're rolling the dice. You ignore the fact that that Taco Charlton or Tack McKinley could have been T.J. Watt. Forget about that for a couple of reasons. First of all, we are collectively trying to sell hope, and nobody tunes in to see something other than hope. But also, if we acknowledge that half these guys are going to be busts, the fans will say, well, which ones? And the draft experts, even the most seasoned and skilled, will say, well, we don't know, to which the fans will respond, well, why the hell are we listening to you then? So that just, that just bugs me that there's zero transparency, there's zero self-awareness by ESPN, NFL Network, any of the so-called draft experts to say, you know what, at the end of the day, we don't know what the hell we're doing and neither do the teams. <laughs> They don't, Mike, and that's what's so funny about it. And it's the same with free agency, too, frankly. I mean, these players change teams, and we say, oh, they're going to be great because they picked up so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. And I remember a few years ago, I remember when the Eagles had that huge offseason. They signed multiple huge names in free agency, and, and Vince Young tabbed them the dream team. We've got the dream team now in Philadelphia. That didn't work out so well for the Eagles either. So you're absolutely right. Some moves you make are going to work. Some moves you make aren't going to work. Some draft picks are going to be good. Some are not going to be good. The teams that, that get above 50% usually are the teams that are consistently good. You look at what the Steelers do year after year in the draft. You look at other teams like that. That's why they're successful, Mike. They have a higher success rate picking those guys than, than maybe other teams do. And here's the thing about free agents. Guys who become free agents become free agents for a reason. The team has had them in the building for four years. They know the guy inside and out, and you know what? They're letting him walk away. That usually should tell you, all you need to know, but still, it's part of the machinery. It's yeah. part of the selling of hope, and yet yeah, we're part of it. But at least we're willing to stand up and say, hey, folks, this is hardly <laughs> the, the, the cure that your bad team is looking for this offseason. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.